Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile. Find out just how powerful a few keystrokes can be at TextExpander.com. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, once again, this is a holiday gift guide show to help you find tech and other items that you might want to give or that you might want to get. It doesn't hurt that you put them on your wish list if that's the case. Um, The rules are pretty simple. The panel here can't pick anything that a previous panel member has picked or that any panel has picked prior to this particular show. That way you are sure to get brand new ideas each and every time. Other than that, it's just a free-for-all. We have a lot of fun and uh, see what they come up with. When you say any, any panel has picked previously, do you mean in any year? No, no, just, just this, this year. year. Okay. No, but, but fair question. Fair question. Well, just listening to the words you say, Chuck. Yep. 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 So let's, uh, let's find out who's here. And um, with that, we'll, we'll take first Mr. Kirk McElhern, who just questioned my, uh, my wording. <laughs> Kirk questioned your role as a moderator here. Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> Great to have you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Chuck. Uh, also with us, uh, dressed immaculately this time around, Mr. Brett Terpstra. Brett, welcome. I, I feel like I should have gone and put my own suit and tie on. That was my goal. Make everyone else feel underdressed. Happy holidays. Mm. Happy holidays. I'm not sure everyone will recognize you in a tie with a pocket square. And Well, it's just thing. last time we talked, I showed up in a tank top and I felt, I felt bad for that. So I figured I'd overcorrect. All right. Well, you're now back to even, I think maybe you're on the high side a little bit. Call it a, I don't call even it a, call it a wash. Yeah. I don't even own a suit, so it's a good thing it wasn't a requirement here. <laughs> <laughs> and last but absolutely, absolutely not least, sporting what looks to be a Hawaiian shirt, Mr. Wally Cherwinski. Wally, it's good to have you. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, I, listen, I'm feeling absolutely tropical today. The temperature outside is above freezing here in Canada, so yeah, this is a great day. <laughs> That's right. This is an international panel. Kirk is in the UK and Wally yep. is in Canada and Brett and I are holding down the US uh, title. So just the way we planned it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So guys, you heard the introductions, you know, the rules, we're just going to get right to it because there's a lot of good stuff to talk about. So I want to keep the same order, if that's okay. That way it makes it a little easier for me. So Kirk, that gives you the very first pick for this gift guide. Oh, shucks. Thanks. <laughs> um, have I told you recently, Chuck, that I hate technology? I heard something about that. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of hate technology. And I was thinking about it today of how I was going to lead into this. Um, and I don't know if it's that I hate technology or if it's like upgrade annoyance syndrome of all these things that go wrong. So I have picked things that have nothing to do with technology. They may have been manufactured by technology um, none of them even use electricity, but I'm just totally out of my wheelhouse here. Um, as you know, I do record a music podcast called The Next Track. It's available at thenexttrack.com. Make sure you listen to it. And one of my musical picks for the year is a box set of Beethoven's Complete Works. It was just released by Universal Records. Um, over the past four years, Universal has been plumbing the depths of their catalog and releasing these huge box sets. They released a a Mozart that was 200 CDs and a Bach that was 220. And this year they got to Beethoven because there's some anniversary next year and it's all Beethoven's works. 123 123 CDs, weighs about 12 pounds. It's got a hardcover book. Um, As much as I like to stream music, I like the nostalgic element of taking a CD out of a box and looking at the artwork on the sleeve and slipping it into the CD player and listening to an hour of music instead of, you know, an endless playlist. Um, I've long been a classical music fan. And, you know, Chuck, I know you listen to the podcast and we talk about classical music a lot. And I like these kinds of box sets because they introduce me to performers and interpreters that I don't know. Um, this currently Amazon's got it about 250 bucks. They're not cheap, but when you consider that it's 123 CDs, that's $2 a CD. Um, and that is pretty affordable. So, um, probably three of the listeners here care about that. Um, but 
I really didn't want to pick anything technological, and this is something I bought for myself for my birthday. And that's interesting that you you enjoy that nostalgia part of taking the CD out and all. Yeah. There's that ritualistic aspect of putting the CD into the player and pressing the button instead of double-clicking something. And it means that I can sort of turn off the computer. Um, I'm actually, let's see, I've got a Sonos amp and my CD player is connected to that. But otherwise, I stream from my iMac to the Sonos amp via AirPlay 2. And here's the technology that doesn't always work. And when I go from the CD player to the amp, it's like it works and I don't have to worry about anything. Hmm. Okay. Well, very, I, I feel like your pick goes with Brett's suit. I'm not quite sure why, but that's an interesting possibility, though. I, I wouldn't have chosen the same color shirt to match the box set because it's a reddish. But, yeah, I can I can go with that Venn diagram if you want. If I had okay. known. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Brett's got some keyboards over there and a guitar back there. So he's clearly a musician. Clearly. So, or at least clearly wants to be. Yeah. yeah. Some of us well, do. And if the box set comes in red, I mean, how much more holiday can you get? So Exactly. Good, good job. Good job. Thank you. All right, Brett. Are you, are you going to be musical or are you going to be um, uh, a sartorial or what are you going to be? I'm trying to decide if we're going um, uh, cheap to big ticket or vice versa. So I'm going to start cheap. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I, I'm actually going to go with the hair clippers. The uh, the Remington Shortcut Pro. It's very specifically a hair clip clipper for people like me who like buzzed hair. Um, I don't have enough hair to grow it out, so I regularly cut my own hair. Uh, the Shortcut Pro, I don't have one in my hand right now, but it's like a, a puck of a, of a hair clipper with a curved blade on it. So it can just wrap around all the curves in your head. And because it's just a cord little pop and flip it and point it any direction you need to without having to like adjust the head or anything, you just rub it all over your head and it cuts your hair. And it's the fastest, uh, most accurate way I've ever found to clip my hair. So it's a limited audience. Sure. But it will change the life of someone in your, in your life who, uh, who who keeps their hair very short is it adjustable yeah because well it I comes have about 100 percent more hair than you but not that much it, it comes with uh eight eight or nine different uh guards at different right. lengths uh so it, it's adjustable from i think probably about an eighth of an inch up to uh m- maybe three quarters to an inch I mean, it doesn't. It's not going to be like a suck and cut or anything. But no, that'll work for me. Yeah, hmm. it, it's I'm, worth I'm, it. I'm aspiring to have hair like you, but I just can't get it that short. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brett, it's it's. This is not a a head shaver. This is just a, a something that trims it down very very close. Right. Clippers. Okay. Clippers. Okay. That's probably the first set of hair clippers we've ever had on any gift I figured, guide. I figured that would be easy. I wouldn't even have to check the list to see if anyone had ever, ever picked it before. Yeah. Yeah. You, you were safe. You were safe. You were safe. All right. Wally, are, are you going to go completely non-tech or are you going to bring us back to the tech realm? Well, actually, I, yes, I am. I'm, I'm going to go tech this time. And uh, this one is really good. In fact, uh, it's a photo editing app. It's called Luminar 4, and it has just been released. You know, this is fantastic. Now, I know for anyone watching, you've probably got other photo editing apps. For example, uh, there's Pixelmator and Affinity Photo and Photo Lemur and Aurora and a whole bunch of others, and they're great. Um, Luminar 4, the latest version, has... Um, one thing that it really does amazingly well that nothing else seems to, to match, and that is sky replacement using artificial intelligence. Let me explain that. How often have you taken a photograph on a, kind of a gray day and you look at it later and the sky is sort of really light gray and dingy and dull and just does nothing for your photo? 
Or you may take a photo where the sky is bright in spots and it's just blown out and the rest of the photo is okay, the sky is terrible. So you're not really proud of those kind of photographs. Now, if you want to replace those skies right now, you can do it manually. Um, you've got to get into layers and masks and brushes and stuff like that. It takes some time, it takes some patience, and there's some areas that you can't really replace easily. For example, if you've got trees and branches and foliage and leaves, you can see through those trees to see sky behind them. But doing a replacement the way I mentioned manually, you've got to go in and almost one by one edit all those little spaces to make them look like sky. And that that's almost impossible to do in a lot of cases. What Luminar 4 does, Instantly, in fact, you can do it in three clicks. You open your photo, three clicks later, you have replaced the sky. And it's smart enough that if it sees that tree or those branches with sky behind them, it replaces them perfectly without you having to go and do anything. Now, that's incredible. Um, so you're asking, where do the skies come from? Well, it comes with... I think there's about 29 different skies that are included with the program. Uh, you can buy more if you're unhappy with them, or actually you can shoot your own skies. And I'm already anxious to, to go out and shoot skies when I see them instead of just photos of stuff. I'm going to shoot the sky and bring it back and import it. Um, trick is, though, um, if you do a lot of photographs and you replace a lot of skies, and you're going to um, have some favorites from the options they give you. And you're probably going to end up using the same sky in many pictures later. So that could get a little bit uh, boring. And in fact, when I got Luminar 4, the first thing I did is I went into my photos library. I looked back at all the photos I've taken that I don't like anymore because of those problems I noticed, the gray sky overblown. And I just started replacing them to see how it worked. And it really was magic. Bang, bang, bang. All of a sudden, I had great photos with great skies. So um, it's a standalone app. Uh, and as well, it's an extension for the Photos app. So you can do your editing right in Photos. And um, yeah, I'd, if, if you're in the market for a Photos app, or if you have Luminar 3, this upgrade is well worth the price. If you're new to it, um, you can get it at Skylum.com, Skylum software. It's uh, 89 bucks. Well, I, mean, I have to ask, so you get 20 skies. I mean, do you have the option to say shift the sky around or, or edit it or alter it a little bit so that that way if I take sky number six and I yes. really like sky number six, that all my photos don't end up looking with look like they have exactly the same sky. Yes, you can uh, you can move your skies around. In fact, when I mentioned that you can uh, do the operation in three clips clicks, that's even simplistic because in three clicks you can do a wonderful job and it looks beautiful. If you want to go farther, you can. Uh, th there's a lot of other controls that you can tweak it. You can finesse it. You can uh, change the color balance, you can change the positioning, you can change the, uh, the horizon, you can do a lot of stuff, and you can blend it even better. Um, some skies, for example, you put the sky in there and it just, for whatever reason, it doesn't look natural. You look at it and you say, no, that, that's not a sky that would fit with that photograph. So you try another sky and another sky, eventually you find one that, yeah, hey, that looks pretty Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use that. And then, as I say, you can go in and do the fine controls and the tweaking and make it turn out how you really want to. Hmm. I, I was a user of Luminar 3. I purchased the upgrade. I didn't realize that 4 was out, so I've got to go and download it. But now, now you've whetted my appetite for that. Very nice. Yeah, uh, it was uh, released on November the 18th. So... Um, it's brand new. If you go on their site, the Skylum site, they have a lot of um, uh, tutorials and uh, videos, and uh, they teach you how to use a lot of these features. So um, well worth it uh, to put that in your toolkit. 
Great. Thank you. Great pick. Great pick. All right. So to round out round one, I'm going to talk about something that I'm using as as I speak, um, that Frederick Van Johnson cost me a bunch of money last year, but it has worked out really, really well for me. The camera I'm using as a webcam is the Panasonic Lumix DMC GX85. It's a 4K camera. Um, it's a nice camera. It, I'm not sure it would necessarily be the one that I would pick, you know, to 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 go out and actually shoot uh, uh, photos with. But Frederick taught me that I can use this as a webcam. Now there is a comp a complimentary pick that's required, and that's the Elgato Cam Link 4K. Um, that is the thing that takes the output of the uh, the Lumix and converts it to a USB signal that pretty much any video conferencing software or video input software will accept. So I can record things with my with QuickTime. I can record them here in Zoom, use it for Skype. Um, it gives a much better picture, um, as you can see at the desk behind me, which Kirk is always fond of picking on me about, um, that it creates that depth of field that you really don't get from a normal webcam or from any of the, the webcams built into the Apple products. You have to want to do a lot of video to invest this kind of money. Uh, I'm hesitant to mention a price because it's uh, the camera itself is like over $500. But around the holidays, you will see this in a bundle with a couple lenses and, you know, the usual uh, little small throwaway accessories for as little as $250, $275. So for that kind of money, that I, I would not pay $500 for it. I just could never justify that. But with the special that was on last year, um, I could justify it. And I've been very, very happy with it. Um, it's pretty much lived right where you you are experiencing it now in, in front of my iMac as my webcam. So I check the links in the show notes and by all means do a little searching around because once, once they put the bundle deal on it, it's pretty much everywhere, Amazon, B and H everywhere. So just be patient if you think you want something like this, but I have to tell you, it's been a great addition and, and I feel like it's been a great update to my video. What was the super catchy name of that again? <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> that's what made me laugh. The Panasonic camera model names are just incredible. Yeah, Panasonic Lumix DMC GX85. <laughs> that's amazing. Mark right. II. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, Chuck, and there's the, how, yes, how, how do you mount it? To, is it on your monitor? Is it on a stand? Or how how do you he set it up? has a minion holding it. I, <laughs> I like that idea. Um, no, Wally, I just have a a, a mini tripod here right. on the desk, and right. so I I have it just mounted the uh, the way you would it mount any other camera to any other tripod. Um, well, it look amazing. Good. Yeah. Well, the and the real I mean the real magic again I want to give credit where credit's due is is the Elgato Cam Link because that otherwise you know there would be no way to get it in. Um, the one additional thing that I did have to purchase um, is that uh, it, I, I had to buy an external um, battery pack or battery connector, I should say, so that I'm using a, a rather large um, battery because the internal battery just won't last for 60 minutes um, or or longer, depending on the, sh the Mac Voices episode. And if you go back, well, how long in is a this going to be? Well, are we, are we doing a three-hour episode here, Chuck? No, no, no. But, you know, you'll go back. It, it, when I first got it, you can go back and see that I didn't know that. And as we were coming to the end of an episode, I, I would just wink out, you know, so. Oh, okay. Well, that's, so that doesn't certain, happen anymore. There's a certain something to end episodes winking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I just, I have to tell you, I've been very, very pleased. Frederick did not steer me wrong. Uh, it's been a big, big improvement. So, And as you said, it blurs the desk behind you. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, yeah, I noticed you came on and you didn't even say anything this time. So, well, it was actually going to be one of my picks was to get you a cleaner to clean off the desk once a month. But I, I think I'll pass on that. All right. <laughs> All right. So that that ends round one with Chuck's uh, obligatory abuse. Um, <laughs> so, Kirk, take us into round two. Well, as we're talking photography, um, my next pick just happened to be photography-related. Yet, no technology for me. Um, 
Now, Chuck, I guess if you go to the website here, you can maybe overlay some of the pictures on the video. This is a calendar by a photographer named Michael Kenna. He is a black and white landscape photographer who makes these extraordinary minimalist photos. Um, now, I don't want to tout another podcast, but I do a podcast called Photoactive. And for the podcast um, in June, I met Michael Kenna at an exhibit um, in the south of England. And I've loved his photography for ages. It's one of my favorite types of photography. Um, it's a $25 calendar. It's got 12 pictures plus a cover picture, one per month, you know, as calendars are. Um, I just, if you like this photography, this is the kind of thing you're going to want to see um, wherever you put a calendar. I have a calendar in the kitchen, and I put it there more for the pictures than for the dates. Um, in any case, if you can overlay a couple photos so people can see what it looks like, that would be a lot better than my somewhat um, strange description. Very nice. Very nice. I know you're a big photography guy, and, and you seem to have an affinity for the black and white stuff. Oh, yeah, black and white. That's reality. Color photos are, you know, wrong. I think it was Jean-Luc Godard who once said, life is in color, but reality's in black and white. Okay. I, I consider that to be untrue. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm having a little trouble. Everything I see around me is color, I, but, you know. What Everything you see around you is your brain interpreting wavelengths as color. But I don't think that's really the topic of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go way down a rat hole. So, Brett, help us out. What's your round two pick? Reality is just a construct. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to pick the Samsung T5 for my second round. It is uh, the SSD drive. Has that been picked yet? No, it hasn't. Oh, did I just take one off your list? I see that, expression. List, <laughs> I see that expression on your face, that crestfallen disappointment. Um, yeah. It is, uh, I can't remember what the, it's about 180, I think, uh, for a one terabyte SSD drive that is blazing fast. Uh, comes with adapters to work with USB 3 and USB C, uh, natively USB C. And uh, I think I was getting 400 some megabits per megabytes per second uh, read off of it. And I can do a one terabyte uh, clone drive clone in the evenings uh, with a smart update in about 30 minutes, which is crazy fast for the amount of data that I'm transferring every night. So I'm loving that as a plus the things like, uh, like, two and a half inches by maybe three and a half inches. Uh, tiny little front pocket kind of hard drive. It's amazing. Yeah, this, uh, Brett, I'm sure you've had the same experience. This is one where you can easily and comfortably boot from this drive as mm -hmm. your boot, make it your boot drive and totally. you'll never know that you're running off an external. It's amazing. In fact, when I, when I was first doing, uh, cause I, I'm a developer and when I was first doing testing for Catalina, but wasn't ready to install Catalina on my main work machine, I was dual, I was booting off of a Catalina drive on the T5 and I could use it as I was using Xcode off an SSD without any issue it was amazing yeah yeah usb3 and thunderbolt and all that have really changed things so that now booting from an external drive is is feasible mm -hmm. and this is probably one of the one of the ones you definitely want to consider so great great pick and chuck your list is getting shorter my list is getting shorter yeah yeah wally round two yeah um I'm going to go for some uh, stocking stuffers this time, very, very small items that um, can be very, very useful. Now, as we all know, Apple introduced a 16-inch MacBook Pro very recently, and um, everyone's envious, and um, they've been rushing out to buy one. Unfortunately, not me. Um, I still have a MacBook Air, vintage 2018, so I got to stick with that for a while. But if you have an older uh, one of the Apple laptops, you may be sensitive to the butterfly keyboard and you're worried about whether that's going to be a problem, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this stocking stuffer is for someone who 
wants to protect themselves against um, the dust and crumbs and other flotsam that might get into your keyboard and gum up those butterfly keys. And it's one of these. It's just a very thin silicone keyboard cover that you put right over your keys. It comes in uh, different colors and it's custom sized for different keyboards of different Apple laptops. You can get it on Amazon for something like 10 bucks and it's a great thing to have on your desktop uh, to guard against those accidents. Um, another item I'll mention is something that you can turn the clock back uh, to older Apple laptops. You remember the MagSafe adapters they used to have. The MagSafe worked by um, if you accidentally pulled on your power cord while it was plugged into your laptop or you tripped over it, you ran the risk of pulling your laptop down and bringing it crashing down. So instead, the two pieces, uh, the, the MagSafe disconnected from your laptop. Well, you can do that sort of thing now with a third-party device, and it looks like this. There's a small dongle that connects to your USB-C port, and there's the power cable that magnetically attaches to it. So you set that up, and you plug that into your laptop, and you've got a MagSafe adapter again. Again, prices vary, and this, of course, is the Black Friday season and sales season. So look around, but on Amazon, you should be able to find one of those for around $20. The final stocking stuffer, another very useful gadget again, looks like this, very small. Uh, this is a headphone adapter, and you plug it into lightning port on your iPhone. Why do you need one? Well, the good thing is you can attach headphones to one side and a charging cable to the other. So for example, if you're on a long plane ride, you want to listen to music, you want to watch a movie, but you don't want to drain your battery, you can do both. Headphone one side, charging cable in the other. Again, uh, on Amazon, they go for around $10. So each of these stocking stuffers, I think for a small amount of money, are really good and uh, very practical and useful investments. It's really nice things, Wally. I, I like that. And I want to I uh, just mention that the keyboard cover is, is great for protection, but you also can get them, um, frankly, they're a little expensive, but they're a great way to learn keyboard shortcuts for various programs. Yes. Yes. So you know, they, they make them that way and they color code them and they do all kinds of interesting things. And Wally's probably going to pull one out. Yep. I knew he would. <laughs> this isn't a keyboard cover, but it's an old keyboard that had Final Cut Pro shortcuts on them in different colors. So if you forgot the keyboard shortcut, but you knew what it, the, the function it did, you could look for that color and you could easily find it. So yeah, Chuck, that's a, a really good thought. Very useful. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing three picks per round now? No, those no, were stocking stuffers. Many. Yeah, those oh. were stocking stuffers. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no, don't nobody pa panic. Nobody we panic. could pick three things that are on Chuck's desk behind him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I didn't even get to finish my pick this time. I choose the blurry start. drobo. She's first guy. <laughs> um I'm Brad, I'm gonna kind of piggyback on yours though. Um, because I, too, have a T5. I also have several other external drives that travel with me. And I'm kind of notorious for abusing those drives. You know, unmount them properly, of course, but then throw them in the backpack with not a lot of protection. And that has burned me a couple times um, because they, they take so much abuse. So I'm going to suggest that you get an Amazon Basics external hard drive portable carrying case. These things are small. They're a little hard shell. They will fit pretty much any 3.5-inch drive, um, external USB 3.5-inch, excuse me, 2.5-inch drive, sorry, 2.5-inch drive um, that's out there. And it gives you, on one side of the case, you have, obviously, the place where you put the drive. You have the another side of the case where you can put the, the a reasonably short cable. Um, zip it up, and it protects those devices. I'm not going to tell you I'd want to run a car over it, but it's definitely going to get a lot more protection than just throwing it in my backpack and going. And they're only 
Oh, so wow. it, it, yeah, it does not drive the price up a whole lot. I know Brett for the, like the T5, they make a very specific case for that. And I think they want like 14 or $15 for it. And for this, you know, that, that's one of those like, oh, gee, you know, that's, that's a big, a fairly decent percentage of what I paid for the darn thing. Sure. For six ninety nine, dollars you know, I can, I can pick this up and have my drives protected. Nice. So if, if you travel with hard drives, this is a really, really good investment. Nice. Yeah. I don't know whether Brett has influence over Amazon UK pricing, but for some reason, the T5 is on sale today at 113 pounds. It comes to about $145. Oh, they um, listened to my request. That's awesome. They <laughs> they say the regular retail price is 357 so it's it's 68% off. Um, wow. I may order one of those as soon as we're finished. Worth it. You'll yep. be happy. Yep. I want to tell you about Text Expander, my most used utility that not only makes you more productive, but is also one of the first ways you can start automating tasks on your Mac. There are plenty of things that you type on your Mac repeatedly, every day, sometimes multiple times per day. Your name, your address, your phone number, email signatures, maybe standard answers to email inquiries. You know better than I do what those things are. With Text Expander, you can type just a few characters and have them expand into whatever you want. Your three-letter initials become your full name. Typing three Ds in a row becomes today's date, in whatever format you choose. A few characters become your email signature, complete with phone numbers, your homepage URL, and whatever else you decide to include. But what if you're not sure about those things you type repeatedly? Text Expander monitors your keystrokes and suggests words or phrases that would benefit from a Text Expander snippet, so you get even more value out of the program right out of the box. There's so much more to Text Expander than just simple snippets, though. You can use Text Expander to paste blocks of code, chunks of HTML, paragraphs of text, and much more. Some of those things I just mentioned will get you started on the concept of text expansion, Mac automation, and the many benefits of Text Expander. But don't take my word for it. Go right now to TextExpander.com and download a free demo version of Text Expander and see how easy setting up your first snippet is. Once you get used to having text appear with just a few keystrokes, you're going to wonder how you ever did without it. That's Text Expander at TextExpander.com from Smile, the makers of world-class software at SmileSoftware.com. Thanks to Smile for being the longest-running sponsor of Mac Voices. All right, gentlemen, that's two rounds. So now it's time to reevaluate your lists and decide which things you really want to pick, which ones you really want to steal from me because I probably have them on my list. <laughs> Kirk, start us out. Um, no technology, but a tool. Um, I don't write a lot. I mean, handwriting, but when I do, I like to have nice tools to write. I'm not an actual pen collector because a pen collector generally is someone who likes um, um, fountain pens, and I don't because they're extremely messy. But I like ballpoint pens and mechanical pencils. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. This is a Graf von Faber-Castell Intuition um, mechanical pencil. They call it a propelling pencil because when you turn this a half turn, the lead comes out. Um, mine is in, let me see, I have to check this because I can't remember. It is in Pernambuco, which is a light um, brown type of wood. Uh, I'm going to send you links to all this, Chuck, so you can put in the show notes. And I'll send you a link to the page where they list all their pencils. Um, they have a number of different pencil lines, and this is the thicker one. I have big hands, so the thicker one's more comfortable. It's the thinner ones are north of a hundred bucks or 150 bucks. This one was even more, but you can find them on eBay on like post Christmas sales or companies that specialize in these things. I like it because it's hefty, it's thick, it's 0 0.7 millimeter lead, and most mechanical pencils are 0 0.5. And once I start writing, it breaks. Um, I always keep a legal pad on my desk to take notes during the day or when I'm doing podcasts or on phone calls. And I kind of alternate between a mechanical pencil like this, a regular pencil, um, some nice pens I have. Uh, I just find that it makes my working day a little bit nicer to have nice objects around. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. 
I, the, I don't know how good the picture will be for folks, but um, is it a, I mean, it's, you said it's wood. Is it a really smooth finish or does it have, it's, you know, the, it's fluted. Well, you're going to okay. put a link to the website so you can see it's a right. fluted wood. Um, it feels like wood. The tip and the top end and the clip are platinum plated. Um, and yes, it has a wood feel. So it feels like a big wooden pencil. Very nice. Very nice. I did a lot of work to come up with these things today, Chuck. Yeah, to stay away from tech, you're right. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Brett, round two. Okay. Three. Big ticket time. Uh -oh. So for the for the the nerd for the real like hardcore computer programmer nerd in your life the ultimate hacking keyboard this keyboard splits in half and you can get these palm rests which if you were to buy this keyboard you absolutely should get the palm rests that are available and then you can control you can put the feet on in any of diff eight different positions to make it tent in different directions for ergonomics. And then the keyboard itself is completely programmable. You can program exactly what key every key sends or even key combinations and macros. And you can have multiple different configurations uh, that you can switch between. And it is, when you buy it, you can get it with uh Cherry browns, blues, uh, there uh, and Gatorons. There are like eight different keys that you can key switches that you can choose from. And uh, obviously, I did some customization with the keys on mine, but um, you can get the case in white with black keys, you can get a red case or a black case. It's a nerd's dream come true. It's the best keyboard I've ever owned. And I would recommend it to anyone. If you want to get someone, if you don't know exactly what keyboard someone wants, but they like fancy keyboards, this one's a, a surefire winner. It doesn't surprise me at all that somebody like you would pick something like that because you spend a lot of time at the keyboard. Well, and also I wanted to pick something that I knew wouldn't be on your list. So, <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Good, good pick. Good pick. Unique. I don't think we've had anything quite like that before. They, they run. They're a few, a couple, a couple to three hundred dollars. So they're not cheap, but they're amazing. Great, Wally, your round three pick. Okay, um, it's not a, a specific thing I'm going to recommend, but it's a place to visit. Um, if you're like me, uh, when you sit down at your computer uh, every morning, you visit various uh, websites to get the Apple news, etc. And one of the places, of course, I always go is the Mac Observer. Um, so if you go to MacObserver.com, but instead of reading the news, you scroll down to the very, very, very bottom of the home page, and in the middle, there's a link. And it says TMO Deals. And it takes you to a page that's deals.macobserver.com. And you can browse around in there, and it's a whole there's a whole section of holiday gift guides in various categories. So they say they'll give you something for the road warrior, for your mom, or gifts for Apple fanatics, all sorts of stuff. And they have um areas in different price ranges. So there's a, a group for $25 and under, and there's another one for $100, etc. cetera. Um, there's a, and if you poke around in there, there's some really good deals on software. So for example, um, iMazing2, if you know that program, iMazing, it's uh, an application that you use to back up your iPhone or your iPad, and you manage the data on it so you can actually um, move files around. It's on sale there for $14.99, which is really 
quite a, an excellent price for something like iMazing 2. I, I don't want to single that one out uh, expressly, but there's a whole lot of other software deals and a whole lot of hardware that you can browse through to see if there's something that uh, you might find interesting or you know someone who may be interested. Great, great pick. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. As much as I visit TMO, I'm not sure I ever realized that that link was there. So now I've got to go and look and see what, what ideas I can steal from them. <laughs> well, every now and then they, they do a new story saying, here's a great deal. And if you press the link, it goes to this area of the website that's full of those deals. For example, the other day, I think Brian uh, posted a link to uh, a Christmas tree ornament that was in the shape of a Tribble from Star Trek. Now, that was a great one. That wasn't a TMO deal, but it was a news story saying, hey, here's a really neat thing that you might be interested in. So check out MacObserver.com and uh, look for Brian Chaffin's uh, story within the last couple of days and grab your Trouble with Tribbles <laughs> Christmas tree ornament. I like it. I like it. A furry Christmas tree ornament. All right. So let's see. So number four or, or third round pick, excuse me, number th Brett, I think I'm going to kind of keep going with the hard drive theme. Um, sooner or later, folks, you're probably going to end up with an extra 2.5 inch drive, whether you buy it as a data drive or whether you upgrade something uh, internally on one of your devices and have this laying around. You need some, some way to make use of it. And I'm going to tell you to go and look at the, and I hope I pronounce it right, the Orico 2.5-inch USB 3 external hard drive enclosure. Um, this is a clear enclosure uh, for your hard drive. You can slide it in there, plug it in, and that's it. Um, it, it provides a nice, fast interface. Uh, <laughs> Wally, I should have known. Um, <laughs> but that's the 3.5-inch version, isn't it? This is the 3.5 inch model. And uh, as you say, it's, it's fantastic and it looks nice and you can see your drive inside. And yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I said I was picking backing again off Brett's is that goes well with the, uh, the Amazon case that I recommended too. fits right in there. Uh, so it, it means that you will have that extra storage that you need. It can be, it can handle SSDs. It can handle spinning drives. Um, in the case of data drives, of course, you don't really need anything that fast. You just need capacity. So, and this, let's see, this is a grand total of $9.99. Wow. So, you know, why wouldn't you, if, especially if you have that, that drive laying around So or if, yeah, or if you just see a deal on a, on a, a two point five inch drive, you know why not get yeah. it and add a ten dollar case and go? Have you done any speed comparisons between like a T five with the you know comes with the enclosure and like a kind of uh, generic SSD in one of these enclosures? I have I have not only because I don't have an SSD that is not the T five. Um, I just have a, a, a standard spinning drive in there. So, oh, okay. You know, and, and again, I'm, you know, the T5 is, is noted for its screaming fast performance. Yeah. I, 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 would, I use this strictly as a data drive and not something that I have to have that kind of performance out of. I'd be curious. But, yeah, but for ten bucks, I mean, you know, you can see Wally has it. It's, it's completely clear, super easy to install. Snaps together. Um, you don't have to have any tools or no screws or anything. Um, so it's it's just a nice little addition if you have that extra two point five inch drive. Well, the the one that I have, Chuck, is um, I have a six terabyte spinning drive in there, and it's uh, has a USB C connector. Um, and I use it for archiving Final Cut Pro projects. So if I have to go back later, I can actually plug it in and open that project. I can edit a little bit or I can um, take some of the data from those old projects and move it onto my regular editing drive. But I found it very useful. And again, the, you, the size is no limit. You can go as big as you want to go and store a lot of data. Very nice, very nice item. Good. Thank you for uh, being my Vanna White there, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your Marie Kondo? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I knew this. Sorry, I knew not this intentional, was... but actually, um, in the news today, I saw a thing. <laughs> it's totally intentional. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's the coincidence that in the news, Marie Kondo is now selling gadgets because if things don't spark joy, you have to buy things from her that do spark joy. Right. Oh. It's kind of like Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> things, like crystals and stuff. Yeah. And I just... <laughs> you know, her method is called the Con Marie method. You can't spell Con Marie without Con, right? Right. <laughs> okay. All right. We, that, that was only a joke. There's there no slander involved. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Nothing intended. It's just, um, yeah. you know, yeah. I just see your desk and I think of it every time. This is, <laughs> this is like Fibber McGee's closet, right? <laughs> oh, man. Just give us your fourth round pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one is a book. Um, I'll hold it up here. Um, it's a li- I, this is a li- I got it from the library, so it has that reflection. Uh, it's called The Man in the Red Coat by Julian Barnes. Julian Barnes is a British um, novelist, and he writes also about art and other things. He's one of my favorite authors. Um, every one of his books is enjoyable. And what happened is he came across this painting of this man in the red coat. Um, if I find it while I'm talking to show you the full painting so people can see it, it would actually be a little bit better than just the cover where it's cut off. Um, it was painted by John Singer Sargent, who was an American uh, who lived in Paris. Here's what the guy likes, looks like with his, the whole thing. And he was curious about this person. Who is he? His name was Dr. Samuel Jean Potsy. Uh, you probably know I lived much of my adult life in France, so I'm always interested in this sort of thing, and particularly French literary history. Um, if any listener is still awake, and I haven't bored you to death, um, basically he finds out who this person was, who was a very important person, knew all the aristocrats and writers of the time, and it's this sort of biographical sketch that goes through about him, about other people, um, a lot about writers, a lot about painters. And I just get all of his books when they come out, and I had no expectations, and I find this incredibly enjoyable that it's a light book um, with a, a writer who's very sensitive to style and the way he talks about the art and the way he talks about the other characters in it. Um, it's not it's nonfiction. It's not a novel, but it's written a bit with the novelistic eye. Um, it's just out here in the U.K., before the show, I checked on Amazon. Amazon US is actually selling the UK edition, which they don't always do. And then the US edition comes out, I think, in February. But the UK edition is listed at like $21 in the States, which is less than the list price of the US edition at $25. So The Man in the Red Coat by Julian Barnes. Very nice. Very nice. I'm sorry that I have scared away listeners from the rest of the show. No, because I don't they think all so. expected tech. They all expected us all to come out with, you know. Oh, like, any show I'm on, they know there's going to be yeah. non-tech. <laughs> well, hair clippers are still slightly tech. Yeah, just wait. Just wait for this <laughs> round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a threat, Brett. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. You just wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So we've waited. What's your What's your pick, Brett? <laughs> all right. So. Everyone has a uh, uh, a recovering alcoholic in their life, I'm sure. And uh, as a recovering alcoholic, I can tell you that uh, the link between tech and beer is strong. Uh, in fact, I don't even like podcasting without a beer. And, well, whiskey actually, but I do, I do not have an equivalent to this for whiskey. But there's a brewery called Bravis. B-R-A-V-U-S, that makes non-alcoholic beers that actually taste like beer and are actually um, so close to the real thing that you you could trick somebody. You could hand someone this IPA and they would not realize that it was non-alcoholic. And for those of us who just really enjoy relaxing at the end of the day with a beer, and maybe shouldn't be having one with alcohol in it, this is an amazing find. A guy on Twitter turned me on to it, and I was just astounded the first time I tried it. It costs about the same as buying regular beer, and if you can find a place, uh, a, a liquor store near you that sells it, you'll save a lot of money because the shipping on it is, is nuts um, if you have to order it from the source. But totally, totally amazing beer 
without the alcohol. Oh, and in the spirit of Wally, I have a I have a, a secondary pick for that. Uh, Kin Euphorics, have you seen this? It's uh, a nootropic blend of uh, herbs and well nootropics that you can buy in seltzer format and drink as a, a euphoric. Uh, no alcohol, no hangovers, but you still get a feel good buzz off of it. Um, and you can buy those at a reasonable, reasonable price. They're not cheap, but, um, I'll, I'll add the link to that too. What's that have to do with Wally? Uh, (laughs) Wally did three picks in one turn. So I figured I get two. Okay. I thought you were referring to a shirt or something. I really didn't know. (laughs) Well, sure. I mean, I consider Wally a pretty euphoric guy. Uh, okay. All right. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks. Good pick. Brett, is that something that, uh, I mean, could you theoretically go to a, your local distributor and see if they would order it for you or start to stock it? So Bravis is stocked pretty much nationwide in all kinds of liquor stores. Um, it does not have to happen to be stocked near me and I am lobbying to get a local liquor store to carry it. In fact, I would love it if my favorite local bar would carry it because it's so close to beer that I would be comfortable hanging out in a bar if I had a glass of this. I wouldn't feel any urge to drink anything else if this were available. So, um, yes, they will work with whatever distribution they need to to get there, get the beer there. You just have to find people that are that see a market for non-alcoholic beverages. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Had no idea something like that was out there. Good. I had well, an only... alcoholic beer in the past and it was a regrettable experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly awful. Yep. This is really good. I can vouch. I love beer and I say it's good. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I suspect Kirk and I are going to have some trouble finding it near where we live. However, yeah. Maybe if it's available in the Chicago area, come back stock time next July, <laughs> we can all sit down together and uh, raise a glass. That would be perfect. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So, Wally, what are you going to wrap up with? Well, um, something very simple. And again, I'm going to go back to the photography theme. It looks like this. It's just a tabletop light box. And it has a built-in LED strip, so you can turn the light on. So it's really useful for taking photos of small objects in good light conditions and against a plain background. For example, you might want to keep a record of household valuables or keepsakes that you have, and they're small, and you want to take pictures, and you want them to look nice. Or in my case, uh, when I write articles for Screencast Online Magazine, I want to take a photograph of some item that I may be writing about. So it's really easy to put it inside the light box. You have the light there. You take a picture with your iPhone, and it's done. Nice thing is it comes with um, some backdrops, like these fabric backdrops in different colors. There's a black one, there's a white one, and there's a green one. So if you really want to do a green screen sort of thing, you can. Um, You can shoot photos, you can shoot video of things inside there. It's it's pretty neat, quite inexpensive. They come in various sizes. Um, The one I showed goes for around $30 on Amazon. And it's the kind of thing that you don't use every day, but for certain tasks, it's a great thing to have. Very nice. Very nice. Is Paul, is the uh, the LED strips, are they adequate uh, light for shooting within the box or do you need to supplement it? Uh, you can either way, but yes, it is adequate for shooting inside the box. Or okay. you just use a tripod and use a longer exposure and then you don't have to worry too much. You could. Oh, didn't think about that. Okay, yeah. good photography tip. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, you didn't listen to our recent photoactive podcast about product photography? I missed that one. I oh. think I did. I think I did. I've heard you. Got, I've seriously, I've heard you talk about longer fo- exposures, but I think I missed product. Yeah, we uh, did one product. Um, about product photography with a guy who shoots for DP Review, and it was interesting to hear how he does the process. Mm. I did hear that because he was talking about using the fishing line. 
there you go. Yep. See, that's as, how as, memorable my podcast is that you like I asked you if you heard it, you say no, I didn't. Oh wait, I did. Maybe I kind of it kind of blurs into well, it, it it blurred just simply because I don't do a lot of product photography. But the idea that he was using fishing line to you know angle things and yeah. all that was was very intriguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I really do listen to it, Kirk. I really okay. Do. It's okay. I you don't have to. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. You can't be interested in every single episode. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's true. You you do sort of have to pick and choose, but still, yeah. I usually pick up something. Good. So I'm going to wrap up with something that I know Kirk's a fan of. I'm not sure about Brett and Wally, um, but I'm going to suggest that maybe you might want to give or get a subscription to Audible uh, this year. I've started trying to get back into reading a little more, but frankly, the time the time demands are just too much. But with Audible, I can listen to books while doing other things, and I'm I'm a huge fan of multitasking, as probably you all know. So if I have yard work to do, if I have laundry to do, if I have anything to do, I can stick my earpods or AirPods in and listen to a book. And after a little while, if you've trained, if you take the time and train yourself, you can listen to them at one, one and a half, two, two and a half speed. I'm up to about two, two X speed. And I don't feel like it diminishes the experience. Depends on the narrator, of course, but for the most part, 2x speed is just fine, and I, I can absorb it and enjoy it, and I'm getting to listen to things that I just would never have the time to read. Um, so you, you purchase a subscription, you get a credit a month, um, so that you basically, which translates into one book a month. If you're smart about it, you will pay attention and you know buy, use your credit to get the more expensive books that you want and then just pay for the the ones that you don't. They do have a daily deal, which probably hits my interest at about one every 20. Um, but still it's, it's there. Um, and then there are ways to get discounts uh, on packages uh, of, of credits. Um, and finally, Audible seems to be doing their own productions um, about six, six or seven a month that they give you a selection of two from that month's picks um, for free. Now, those have not been quite as uh, of as much interest to me personally, but they're still there and there have been a couple that have. So, and since it's just all part of the subscription, I mean, why not? So go and check it out. I think that uh, if you have some free time or if you have things that you want to listen to, excuse me, read, and you're not getting to it, maybe you can listen to them. I Go love good- Chuck. I love the uh the um free ones, the Kindle or uh why am I blanking? The free the the the, the ones you just talked about, the free ones they provide every right. month. Um they're great because I I like to listen to books as I fall asleep, but a lot of times I I get into a part of a book where missing five minutes after I fall asleep is kind of a big deal. So those free ones are actually really great to, even if they're not good, it's just free, free audio to fall asleep to. You could listen to podcasts. I, I could, but I tend to get interested in podcasts. I have trouble zoning them out. Yeah. At least Chuck, I a, could listen to bad podcasts. I'm exactly. sure there are a lot of listen, those. I, I make a number of bad podcasts. <laughs> check them out. <laughs> Chuck, you're lucky I, I picked the book that I did because my original choice was going to be an audio book that I just finished today that I got from Audible. So that would have wiped out another one from your list. Yep, you missed your chance. Yeah. I, 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 I just do want love to Audible, go a little though. bit further. Um, it's important to know that you can either get the book a month subscription or you can get the 12 a year subscription. And you can buy your credits. You can use your credits as you want. And then when you run out, you can buy another 12. Um, and also, what you need to know is as a member of Audible, you can return a book at any time if you don't like it. These are both interesting things. Oh, I, I should ask more questions off air. Okay. I can tell you more. I've been, I've been an Audible user for, we're getting on 20 years, aren't we? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, ask them now, Brett, because it, 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 it help and educate the rest of us. Well, let, so, let what's, what's the bit? smart? What's the smart way? Is it the the 12, 12 credit bundles or the month by month? 
the 12 credit because then you'll just buy another 12 whenever you need them. And sometimes what they do is when you run out of credits before the, so the 12 credit bundle is still something that renews and mine just renewed last month. And if you run out of credits a couple months before, they'll sometimes put a little thing up on the, the homepage saying, Hey, you can buy three more credits at the same price as they were per credit for 12. So you don't have to necessarily buy another 12. And you can just keep rolling over like that. I find that I'll often see like a half a dozen books I want, and so I can buy them all, and then just take six months or three months or two months to listen to them. And when I need more, I just buy another dozen. And then how do you return a book? Um, You have to go into your library. You click like the little three dots or something. I think it's any book you've gotten in the last year. And whether you, if you don't like it, you don't like the narrator, or for any reason, you can return it and you get the credit back. I had no idea that's, that's happened something a couple of times. They only started in the past couple of years, um, but it's good to know. Is there an option to tip a narrator if you think that the person reading it is doing an amazingly good job? No, but you should tweet about them. Um, I I try to, yeah. It it just so happens that on the Next Track podcast, we interviewed Simon Vance, who's one of the most extraordinary narrators of Audible books. Um, if you look it up, you'll hear an interesting story about a guy, how he records his audiobooks and all that. He's done thousands of them, I think. Cool. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I've been, do, do you all know what the first, not quite mass produced, but main big production portable audio device was for listening to audio, not a cassette, a digital audio player? The you and creative... I had this conversation, so I'm staying yeah. out of this one. Yeah. yeah. The Creative Labs. No, years no? before that. Well, huh. a couple of years before that. It was the Otis from Audible. Um, it was about the size of, remember when the iPod Nano had that squat version? It was about that big, maybe a little bit thicker. I think you could put two hours of audio at like 16 kbps. And <laughs> when you sync it, it would like take the last two hours, the next two hours after where you had just stopped. Um, it It was actually quite a seller but of course um then not long after the ipod came out and um i don't think the creative Labs supported audible the first ipod didn't support audible i think it was the the ipod 2 that supported the audible format but i had one of those back in the day i'm thinking 99 2000 um not many people know about it but if you look it up you'll see it it was it was really it was like a link in the analog to digital listening uh chain wow so uh, Audible is a great service. I, I really enjoy it too. Uh, one thing to check though also is go to your local library because sometimes they may have a full subscription to Audible and you can actually borrow Audible books from your local library. What? Yeah, it's true. Oh. And uh, a, a library is also subscribed to lynda.com, for example. So if you want to get tutorials, uh, you can go in and check out lynda.com. I, wow. I love audio books, especially in the summer. Um, I, I ride my bikes a lot, and um, I'll go out for typically a two-hour bike ride. And the, the best time for me to listen to audio books is when I'm riding the bike. Uh, I, I listen to podcasts. They're great, too. But somehow... Um, an, an audio book, uh, I follow the storyline and it seems to transport me and a couple of hours later, I've read a few chapters and I come back refreshed. So very nice. Great pick, Chuck. I have learned a bunch of stuff now. Good, good. I, uh, well, and, and, and I, I want to echo Wally's sentiments. I love podcasts. I subscribe to way too many and I, I love learning with those. But there is something about the audiobook experience that is just different. That, like you say, Wally, it it just sort of it's it's not quite escapist, but it can it can turn a three hour drive into you know what feels like more more like a forty five minute drive. Totally, I mean, exactly. It, it, you you get immersed in it, and yeah. you, you tune everything else out around you, and you're so focused on what you're hearing that it's wonderful. Yeah, the, the quality agreed. of the narration has improved a great deal since the early yes. audio books. Back in the day, you would have narrators who would speak like this, and <laughs> they assumed that they were reading books to people who weren't native English speakers or something. I don't know. Um, but now you get much more fluent narrators, and some of them are actually 
uh, were originally actors. Um, you even get sometimes what's called full cast audiobooks, where you have a number of people playing different parts along with narration. I'm a Shakespeare fanatic, and I have all of Shakespeare's plays uh, that I originally bought on CD that you can now get from Audible, and they're full cast recordings where each part is played by a different actor. Hmm. The narrations that fascinate me are the the single artists that are capable of doing eight voices. different characters' voices, and like a male who's able to do a female voice with minor affectation to their own voice, but it, it you immediately recognize it as a female voice. And vice versa. To me, it's even more impressive when a female narrator can do a good male voice. But that stuff fascinates me. I I love listening to a good narrator. And in many cases, when you have a narrator who's the author of a book, um, the book I just finished today, um, I'll, I'm going to get an extra pick because you guys took an extra pick. Um, <laughs> it's it's a memoir by Patty Smith called Just Kids. It's about her life with the photographer and artist Robert Maplethorpe. Sure. And yeah. it's Patty Smith reading the book. And you get much closer to the story when it is the author, particularly a voice you might be familiar with if you know the music. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I like. I really do enjoy the ones, especially. I mean, obviously, they're they're the, the nonfiction ones, um, where the author is the narrator, and you you just get. I, th- I think you have a whole different sense of what's going on with it, and uh, even though they're reading their words or the words that were written, um, I don't know. It just it, there's a lot more emotional impact. I think so. Yeah, you know, it all depends on the book, but by all means, go and experiment, folks. I think you'll enjoy Audible. Guys, once again, had a lot of great picks and a whole lot of fun. Thank you very much for your time and and for uh, spending it with us. Um, I want to make sure that folks know where to find you, though, uh, when you're not here. So we'll go around the horn one more time and feel free to uh, promote or let folks know where they can contact you if they want to talk about your picks or anything else. Kirk? Uh, you can find me at kirkville.com, kirkville.com, get it? Um, you can also check out my podcast and extract Photoactive and a couple of others. And I just want to, while we mentioned iMazing 2, um, great app. I work for iMazing. I do screencasts for them. So um, you might hear my voice on YouTube if you check out an iMazing screencast. Great. Thanks again. Happy holidays. Yep, you too. Brett, I was disappointed you didn't show us more of the pink cufflinks, but, you know, what are you going to do? They don't show up well on on this, because I don't have the camera you do. They're, they still look good. Still look good. Yeah, they do look good. <laughs> I look good. Um, So you want to know where to find me, though? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find me at uh, brettterpstra.com, uh, which has links to ways to contact me by email and all of my projects and everything. And uh, around the social medias as TTSCOFF, TTSCOFF, um, which is probably the easiest way to grab me on Twitter or Mastodon or whatever. You'll find me. Great. And Thanks can I just so make much. a shout out to Brett's great app, Mark2, which is a markdown viewer that I use almost every day. Thank you, Brett. Oh, thank you. Brett, thanks so much. Happy holidays. You too. Wally? Well, I, I don't have a podcast, and you can certainly find me on social media by looking up my name. Uh, however, if you go to screencastsonline.com, I write a, a monthly column in the Screencasts Online monthly magazine with Don McAllister. And if you're curious about what I actually do in video, I finished a book uh, called uh, Video to Go, and it's available in the iTunes store. And just look up my name and you'll probably stumble across it. It's been out for a year now. And actually, I have to do an update. And I was disappointed to find that iTunes author, which I created the book in, is a 32-bit app. Therefore, I'm... (laughs) I'm moving very slowly to upgrade to Catalina until I actually do one final update to the book. So that's me. Do you why I hate technology? (laughs) It's the worst. I didn't know that. I was actually thinking of self-producing a book and now, okay, check that one off in OmniFocus. Don't need to worry about that anymore.
Well, at least iBooks author is 32-bit, unless they upgrade it, uh, or there's an alternative to export your all of your layout and your data and everything else to some other platform. Um, you're kind of stuck. I yeah, don't. I like I like the way iBooks author allows you to make those galleries and put videos in and all. So that. Yeah, I'm on Catalina wonderful. right now, and iBooks author is launching for me. I don't know if I have a newer version. Uh, or if something came with Catalina, okay. but if I launch iBooks Author right now, it, it loads up. Wow, Brett, that's the best news I've heard all day. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or or you can just run uh, Mojave off of one of Brett's. Uh, there you go. T T fives. Yeah, that's right it. There. So, see, solving problems for the holidays. <laughs> Wally, thanks a lot. Happy holidays to you. My pleasure. Great to get in gig together with you guys. Yeah, this has been way too much fun. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Um, again, if you haven't figured it out, I know the links are in the show notes uh, that to everything we picked. So make sure you go there. That way you go right to exactly the make and model that was selected. Um, we do use Amazon links, so it helps support the show and doesn't cost you anything. And if you want a more visual presentation of not only these picks, but all of the picks from all of the gift guides this year, there is a Mac Voices 2019 Holiday Gift Guide magazine on Flipboard. It'll let you see everything, flip through it, look at it, and you can order right there, right there from the app as well. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.